In this section, we're going to walk through how to integrate AI capabilities into a popular chat service called Discord. We'll walk through the steps of how to use the multilingual abilities of ChatGPT to make communication amongst users in a Discord community easier. So let's set the stage. Meet Gabriela. She is from Brazil and speaks fluent Portuguese. She's part of a book club with a Discord channel that is used to share what they are reading. She would like to more easily communicate with her friend Emma, whose native language is English. Meet Emma. She is from the US and her native language is English. She is in the same book club as Gabriela and would like to more easily communicate with her friend. In this tutorial, we're going to build a Discord language bot that gives Gabriela the ability to type her message in Portuguese and have it translate into English. Conversely, the bot will give Emma the ability to type her message in English and have it translated into Portuguese. There are three main steps to build this language bot. First, we're going to build two flows in Flowwise for AI translation services. One flow is to translate from Portuguese to English and the other from English to Portuguese. The next step is to create the Discord bot and set up authentication. Lastly, we're going to connect the Discord bot with the AI translation services. So let's look at a simple architectural diagram to explain how this will work. When a user executes a Discord bot command, the Discord client that we build will contact the Flowwise server and call the appropriate translation services. The Flowwise service will then execute the AI flow and return the result, which will then be displayed to the user in a Discord channel. Now let's dive into the build. So let's get started with the uh, build of the chat flows first. I'm going to add two flows. Uh, one is to go from Portuguese to English, and then I'll duplicate that flow and go from uh, English to Portuguese. So I'll add new, and I'm going to drop just three components. All right, so chat model, I'm going to select OpenAI. I'm going to try my large language model chain in here. And then I'm going to now drag in my prompt template. All right, so I in my prompt template, I'm going to specify the translation that I want. So in this case, I want to go from one language to another. Translate from a language to upper language, the following text, and then I'll format this. So in the input text, it's going to be Portuguese. And output language is English. And then for the text, uh, that is going to be from the user input. All right, so I've done that. And now I'm just going to connect to my key and hook up the rest. I'm going to then save this as my Portuguese to English and test it out. So I'm, I've translated here uh, in English from Google, uh, what is a good book that you recommend? So in Portuguese, it, Google says it's this, All right? So I'll copy this. And just test it out. Just make sure that it gives me back uh, the right English. All right. All right. So we've got my our translation service. So what I'm going to do next is now just copy this. I'll save it and just duplicate this chat flow. And just go the other way around. Okay. So I'm just going to now go here and flip it. All right. So this is now English. And I'm going the way around to Portuguese. Okay, and I'm going to just test it again. I'll save this and I'll go English to Portuguese. All right, and I'll save this. And this is what is a good book you would recommend. So I'll just go back to my translation service in Google just to make sure that 
it's okay. So it translates to the right English. The second step is to create the Discord bot and set up authentication. To do this, we're going to walk through each of these steps. Create a new Discord application. Then we're going to create a bot token. We're going to enable the permissions and then finally invite the bot to our Discord server. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is to navigate to the discord.com developers slash applications URL. I'm going to select new application. I'm going to name my bot translator. Bot. Okay, great. I can upload a uh, icon if I wish, but for this simple example, I'll just use a default. And now I have created the application. Next, let's create the token. I'm going to navigate to the bot. And then I'm going to go to this reset token part. Say yes. So it's created a new token. You can think of uh, these tokens as just authorization keys. So this is the key that uh, says that you own this bot. So I'm going to copy this and put it in a safe place. And then I'm going to enable these uh, privilege gateway intents. So I'll turn these on. And these allow my, my bot to communicate with the server. Lastly, I'm going to, uh, for this step, generate a URL so I can invite this bot to my Discord server. So I'll go to this OAuth2, select URL generator, and then I'm going to say that I need uh, to invite my bot, and I'll give it a couple more permissions, read, messages, view channels, and then all the text permissions I'm just going to enable. And then this uh, generated URL, I'm going to copy that. I'll go ahead and open that URL. And I'm going to select the server that I want this bot to be invited to. So in this case, I've created my own server. I'll say continue. And then I'll say authorize. say I am human and then success and I'll go to my discord server and you can see here the translator bot has been invited uh, but it's offline in the third and final step we're going to connect our discord bot to the AI translation flows we're first going to fork a riplet that has a pre-configured template code that we can run. We'll then examine this code so that we can use this as a starting point for any modifications we would like to make in the future. And then we'll set up the environment variables that we need, and then we'll run. So what the first step we're going to take here is go into this URL, riplet.com, uh, my username, and this riplet that I've created with some boilerplate code that uh, supports this translation, right? So I go to here, and had I not already uh, created a copy of it, uh, I would need to fork it and then create a copy myself, all right? So uh, the first step is to fork the riplet. And then I'm going to now, assuming that I've already created uh, my riplet here, a copy of my riplet, I'm going to uh, just examine the code so you can see What's, in, what's inside this uh, template code. Uh, so at the top is uh, some environment variables that we're going to uh, set later on to point to the flow-wise translation services, one for Portuguese to English and the one for English to Portuguese. And then this is the third environment variable, which is the Discord bot secret, that uh, the token that we created in the early part of this uh, tutorial. Now, there's some uh, additional boilerplate here that is not so important. Uh, but what you see here is this part here is uh, the, the code uh, that tells uh, the bot 
uh, what commands you're interested in building. So this command, Portuguese to English, is a new command. And then uh, inside here, uh, when the user uh, uh, does this command, it will then uh, call into our back end. All right. And then uh, the last part here is very similar going the other way. All right. So now I'm just going to set the environment variable and then I can go ahead and start running it. So in order to set the environment variables, uh, I'm going to go to the tools section here and then go to secrets. And then I'm going to create some environment variables. All right. So the environment variables are first my discord secret and then I'm going to copy uh, what I created before in terms of the token okay, I'll save that a new secret and the secret here is my URL uh, for Portuguese to English so I'll create this and the value of that is going to be uh, in here so I'm going to go back to my flow wise flow so I have a flow for Portuguese to English. So I'll open that. And up here, the top, I'll select Python. And then this tells me whenever I call this URL, this flow will be run. All right, so I'll copy this. And then I will put that as the value and save it. And I'll do the same thing for the English to Portuguese. All right, so English to Portuguese, go to here. And then again, I'll go back to my low wise flow. This is English to Portuguese flow. And then I will again, select the endpoint here in my Python. Copy that, save it. Now we can start running it. So you can see here, my bot is now running and it's connected. I'm now going to go to my Discord server and I'm going to start uh, typing these commands. So as you can see, as you start typing it, I now have these commands within my server. All right. So I'm going to say English to Portuguese. What is a good book to read? Right. So when I do that, it's going to translate this into Portuguese. And now I'm going to go the other way and I'm going to have the command Portuguese to English like this. And it should give me back what is a good book to read. Okay. So now we have that capability right within our Discord channels. One last thing to call out and the final step is if you go to uh, the top menu bar here, for your Ripplet, I recommend uh, to set this on. So this, this is a setting called always on. So your Ripplet will stay awake. Uh, this is obviously very important because you want uh, your uh, bot to be uh, responsive and, and not uh, uh, go to sleep. Okay, so we'll turn this on as well. 